It seems rational that contracting parties can agree on the amount of damages in case of a breach. But under what circumstances is that agreement enforceable? It's fourth and goal, and the coach is hoping for a penalty flag in Vanderbilt University versus DiNardo. In 1991, Vanderbilt University hired Jerry DiNardo as its head football coach. DiNardo's contract was for five years and included a liquidated damages provision, stating that DiNardo knew that his agreement to coach for the entire five-year term was the essence of the contract. Vanderbilt wanted stability in its football program to encourage player recruitment and assistant coach retention. In the event that DiNardo breached the contract to coach for another school, the provision stated that DiNardo would pay Vanderbilt liquidated damages, equal to his net salary for the remainder of the contract term. Prior to the contract's expiration, the parties agreed to a two-year contract extension. In 1994, DiNardo left Vanderbilt to coach at Louisiana State University. Vanderbilt demanded that DiNardo pay it three years of DiNardo's net salary. DiNardo didn't respond to the demand. Vanderbilt sued DiNardo for breach of contract, and DiNardo had the action removed to federal district court. The district court ruled in Vanderbilt's favor and found the liquidated damages provision enforceable. DiNardo appealed to the Sixth Circuit.